let's finally work on to getting this engine mounted to the frame. Now to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to actually move this motor mount from there down to this flat spot right there. It's gonna make it a little bit easier to make the mounts to the frame. It also makes it to where I can cut this off so it's not so close to the brake discs and I can kind of scoot this thing a little bit more forward. Hopefully these aren't at an angle for a reason. Hopefully it's not going to affect any vibrations or doing anything by moving this motor mount, but I don't think it will. I hope it doesn't, but it's, it's, it's I kind of have to do it just to make it to where I can scoot this thing forward and have actual decent motor mounts that aren't, you know, in the way of the brake disc. Now actually, instead of just simply moving this mount down to here, I, I was looking at these mounts and I was like, why are they different? But then I realized this mount is good for compression. This kind of mount is good for extension, trying to be pulled apart. And if you think about it, on the original setup of the snowmobile, the secondary pulley of the CVT is on this side. Therefore, the belt is trying to pull the engine this way, trying to pull this side apart and trying to push this side together. That's why this mount is normally on this side and this mount is normally on this side. But on the new setup, because we have to have the secondary pulley on this side, it's now going to be trying to pull the engine this way. So that's why I switched these mounts to over here. This one is now on this side and this one is now on this side. Yeah, I think uh, this is definitely going to be the hardest part of this whole project is trying to get everything to fit in the back end of this thing because not only do we have to have this giant expansion chamber, we also have to have the giant muffler that has to connect to this to have proper back pressure, but we also have to have the whole CVT and jack shaft right here. We have to make it to where the chain isn't hitting them up. We don't want to have, have to modify the muffler that much. We don't want to mess with the tuning of this thing, so... And we also have to have the radiator. It has to go back here somewhere and have decent airflow, so we got to make room for that. So, I'm trying to figure out where's a good spot for this engine. You know, no, uh, normally most VW bugs and Baja bugs, uh, the engine's sticking out way past the back end of this thing, so... I don't think it's going to be the end of the world if this engine's sticking out, but it's just... We don't want this thing struggling to keep the front end on the ground, so I'm trying to make it to where it's as close into the frame as possible. But uh, that's proving to be a bit of a challenge to, you know, figure out where to put this thing. So also I'm trying to figure out, you know, do we want the center of mass of this engine in the center, or do we want the width of this, you know, the, this thing in the center? Because the CVT sticks out a little bit more on this side. So I moved it over to where it's now almost equal between this and this tire, this and this tire, because I don't think it's going to be the only world if it's a center of mass is a little bit heavy. Also, we have to have the CVT, so hopefully it'll, it'll hopefully balance it out. But yeah, this is going to be a challenge to get everything to fit in here. So right now I'm just trying to try to mock everything up, just make sure like the chain's not going to hit. The, uh, the expansion chamber, make sure we have room for this, room for that, and all that kind of stuff. Then once I figure out, like, this is a good spot for it, then we have to figure out how we're making mounts 
to actually mount this engine to the frame. Alright, so before I add the mounts for the engine on this side, we first need to figure out where the jack shaft's going to go and kind of get that figured out because I, I want to add a hoop around this engine that's going to go around here and then back up to the frame right there and we're going to have to modify this to bend up to that hoop. So let's do that before we finish these mounts. So let's work on adding a bit more tubing back here for you and figuring out where the jack shaft is going to go. So we got the jack shaft in place, the secondary pulley is mostly that's where it's going to go. Now because everything is so compact and you know everything is crammed in here, I'm having to figure out where everything has to go before I can add any tubing to like figure, because right now the next thing I need to do is figure out the mount for this second bearing, because right now the jack shaft is kind of just sitting here, only one bearing is uh, tacked in place. so. I can't really just add, because we need to figure out first where the expansion chamber is going to go, but we can't do that yet until we get the fiberglass in place, and we can't do that until we, uh, we do need to uh, cut some of the fiberglass, because right now this part right, right, right here, the CVT, is going to stick out past the fiberglass like at about an inch and a half or two inches. So we're going to have to cut some of the fiberglass right there to get it to fit on here. Also cut a little bit you know, of uh, the fiberglass right here to get it to fit, but I was thinking at first of like, you know, like before I cut any fiberglass, let me make sure that this is a good spot for the jack shaft. I was considering trying to get a longer belt, so therefore I can move it, move the jack shaft forward a little bit more, so therefore we don't have to cut too much of the fiberglass. But looking at it, it's like if I, 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 if I moved it an inch, it would be a little bit easier, but then it's more in the way of the of the expansion chamber. The bearing's gonna be really close to the expansion chamber right here. So I think let's just, instead of trying to find a longer belt and trying to move the jack shaft a little bit forward, let's just leave it how it is. Because I did already buy a brand new belt for this. This is the original belt. I won't be using it. I'm just using it for mock-up right now. And I did buy a brand new belt for this thing. So let's just, let's just use that and try to leave the jack shaft where it is and try to make this setup work. So now, let me get the fiberglass on here. Let's cut the fiberglass where it needs to, where it can sit on here properly, and then we can figure out exactly where this expansion chamber is going to go. Get that figured out, and then I can figure out where exactly the second bearing mount is going to be added. Then we can figure out where more of the tubing is going to go that goes around the engine and figure out all that stuff. 
So actually, because I don't want to cut this part of the fiberglass just yet, let me just simply remove it for now while we're trying to figure out where the muffler or expansion chamber is going to go. Fiberglass before, so here goes nothing. Yeah, I had to trim this a little bit more, but now it fits. I will probably have to trim this even more to make it to where we because we don't want this touching this. Because I don't know, is fiberglass flammable? We definitely don't want this hitting the expansion chamber, but once we get everything, you know, finalized, I'll cut more of this away and put some type of heat shield around it. Yeah, holy crap, is that really close to the fiberglass? Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to cut a lot of this to get the secondary pulley to fit in here, which I don't think is gonna be end of, end of the world because I will be putting a piece of aluminum over it and, you know, so therefore I can build it up and have it a little bit higher. So in the end, I'll be able to, I'll be able to make it work and not weaken the fiberglass. So this right here, right there, this is the maximum upwards travel of the rear suspension. Now what I'm thinking for the expansion chamber is putting it right here and having it come out the side right here. And then I'll put the muffler kind of either above the engine or more back here, and then just have tubing going from this to here. But I think this is this is like the only good spot for the expansion chamber, trying to make it sneak out past here. We just have to make sure it's not going to hit, not gonna hit the, uh, the suspension when it goes all the way up. Yeah, we are gonna have to cut a lot of this fender to get this expansion chamber to fit, but I, I just, I think this is the best spot for it. Now, actually, I was thinking about this. Uh, this is, I, I will admit, a much better spot for the expansion chamber, just simply putting it right here and having it stick out to the back window, but this is where the radiator is gonna have to go in this back window. If I could figure out a better place for the radiator, I would put the expansion chamber here. That's, it, it's not in the way of anything, it's not close to the tires, it's not close to where I'm sitting, and it's kind of just really the best spot for it, but I can't figure out anywhere on this to put the radiator, and we, we kind of need a big radiator, because we don't want this thing overheating. To give you guys an idea of what that's gonna look like, uh, we're not using this radiator, but uh, this is one that's, I may need to get one a little bit smaller, but you know, I will make it to where it fits in there a little bit better, but just something like that. That's my idea of where the radiator's gonna go. It's gonna get really good airflow. I know it is really close to where I'm sitting, but literally anywhere else I put this radiator, unless I put it way back here, it's gonna be close to where I'm sitting. I was thinking about for a little bit, seeing if I can get it in the front of the vehicle. Basically the only spot would be above my legs. And uh, that's not a good spot either, so I think let's just put it back here and let's try to fit the expansion chamber uh, right here above the suspension. In case you guys can't tell, this is only temporary, just to hold it in place to figure out if this is a good spot for it or not. Yeah, it's a bit of a tight fit, but I'll cut this off and I'll weld it flush so that's not sticking out so much. And 
I don't really think expansion chambers get super hot. I mean, they definitely don't get to the temperature that a header can get up to, so I think this is fine. Yeah, so this is why I had to install the expansion chamber before adding this piece of tubing. I don't think it's going to be possible to be able to bend this in such a way where it's not hitting the expansion chamber, but also next to the bearing. So I think I'm just going to get as close as possible and then somehow bridge the gap between here and here. Yeah, I know this is super ugly looking, but right now I'm just trying to make it to where this fiberglass fits on here again. And what I'm really thinking about doing, once this thing's a little bit closer to being finished, what I may do is um, I may take, because we probably don't want this fiberglass touching this expansion chamber. So I'm, what I may do is I may take a three quarters to an inch gap and uh, cut like a huge gap all around the fiberglass on here next to the expansion chamber. But, but we don't want a huge gap, so what I may also do after that is take aluminum, take like a two inch aluminum strip and put it over, because we can make it to where the aluminum's a lot closer to the expansion chamber, and that'll also help clean it up a little bit more and probably also help strengthen it. Uh, strengthen up this fiberglass a little bit better, better, so. Yeah, right now this is kind of just crude, just making it to where this fiberglass fits on here again. But later on in the build, I'll really clean this up and make this look a lot better. So for this side, I'm probably gonna have to cut a lot more of the fiberglass on this, because I had to cut really close to the back window, and I may have to, to allow for more adjustability of the chain, I may have to cut it all the way up to here, and I'm definitely gonna have to cut more on this side, because I know the secondary pulley expands when the belt adjusts and everything, so I'm probably gonna have to take another inch and a half or maybe two inches off of this side, take a little bit more off of this side to allow for adjustability, and we also have to make sure that this is properly aligned with this. So Now, what I'm definitely gonna want to build an aluminum cover over this whole CVT and make it to where 
anytime you run through a puddle, the belt doesn't get soaking wet. So I'm probably gonna make it to where this side of the aluminum cover gets, gets riveted onto the fiberglass to not only help strengthen it up, but also make it to where it's the cover and make it look a little bit prettier than this, so. And this is why I was really trying to figure out, like, can I move this further forward? Can I find a longer belt? But now that I'm looking at it, it's like, I would have had to move this thing like six, five or six inches further forward to make it to where we wouldn't have to cut so much of this fiberglass. Because of where it is, it's just, yeah, it's not a good spot for the CVT. But literally, this is the only spot to make it to where the, uh, the secondary pulley isn't hitting the CV axle. It's not hitting the rear suspension. So... Yeah, cutting fiberglass is definitely a messy operation. There's now fiberglass dust on this whole thing and everywhere in the shop now. So, now, next video, we need to finish the engine mounts because technically we only got half of the engine mounts, but that was pretty much the hard part of mainly just figuring out where exactly this thing's going to go, making sure that it's not too, for, too far back, trying to get as close as possible in the frame, but making sure make sure that there's still room for everything. So next video, we will add more to, cause I want to have a hoop going from like right here in the frame, going around the engine and then back. Then we'll bend these up to here, possibly add a little bit more tubing under here. We want to help protect this engine. Also possibly giant skid plate under this thing. And then we can finish the other side of the engine mounts. So yeah, looking at this, it's like, yeah, most of the weight on this vehicle is going to be in the back. So there's not really, I'm trying to figure out how can I get any components, any things with like a gas tank or even the radiator in the front to kind of help balance out the weight. But it's just because of how compact this thing is, I can't fit a radiator up there. The radiator is going to have to go right here. I can't fit a gas tank in the front. It's going to have to go behind the seat. So it's like we may have to add some big weights to the front end to kind of help keep the front end on the ground on this project. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out once we further finish this thing and get it running and working on all that kind of stuff. But uh, anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video.